In this video, I'm gonna be introducing electrical circuits and its main three components, which are voltage, current, and resistance. So when people mention electricity, what are they really referring to? They're really referring to a flow of electrons within a circuit. So the most important thing to understand is definitely the requirements for an electrical circuit. Now, opinions may vary on this, but you definitely need these two components right here, which are one, a closed conductive path, or what's also known as a complete path or a closed circuit. And number two, you need some kind of power source, which is also known as a potential difference as well. So say, for example, we draw a simple circuit like this. That has a battery, wires, a light bulb, and then wires coming back to the other terminal of the battery. Okay, we have both of our components here, which is a closed path. The closed path is right here. As you can see, it makes some sort of loop where the electrons can continue to get energy from the battery and then flow through the entire circuit. And then we clearly have a power source, which is the battery itself. And if you take a look at the battery, um, if you take a look at the top of a battery, you'll probably notice that there's a little tab that's actually a rod that goes through the middle of it. And then on, there's an outer metal shell. And then in between that rod and the outer metal shell, there's sort of a white paste that's the battery acid that helps neutralize um, your atoms and allow the current to keep on flowing. If you take a look at this circuit right here, they're typically not drawn like this. They're typically drawn as a schematic diagram where there is a cell or a battery and then some wire and a little zigzag line that represents a resistor. So typically when you see electrical circuit diagrams drawn, they're gonna look something like this. So the way it works is when the electrons are connected in this circuit right here, um, they're already present everywhere because everything is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So you don't need electrons. Electrons aren't contained within this battery. They're already within all of the components in the electrical circuit. So we have our battery and our two different materials, which could be like a carbon and the zinc. And what happens is the electrons get a certain amount of energy and they get pulled through the circuit from the um, one terminal to the other. And then as they get pulled through the circuit, they're forced through something like the light bulb and their energy will be used in the form of creating light um, in this specific scenario. Now let's focus on these three main components of an electrical circuit, which are voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage is the factor that determines the amount of energy per charge which is also known as the electric pressure or the potential difference because there's some kind of delta V. There's a change in velocity. So, or excuse me, there's a change in voltage. So there is a high voltage region and then a low voltage region and then um, charges flow from high to low. So when you're taking a look at each of the electrons, they're loaded up with a certain amount of um, electric potential energy per charge. And then as they get that energy from a battery or some other source, they move throughout the circuit. The unit for voltage is a unit that's commonly known, um, which is volts, named after Alessandro Volta, and that's notated with a capital V. For current, uh, this is similar to an air current or a water current. It's the rate of flow, and this one specifically is referring to the rate of electron flow. So it's the charge per second. So if you're taking a look at any specific point in the circuit, if you take a look at the amount of charge that flies by a single point per second, that's gonna be the measurement of the current. And the unit for current is amperes, which is the full name for the actual unit itself. But people typically use the shorter version, which is amps, and that's notated by a capital A. Now for our last part, it is resistance capital R. And just as it sounds, it's some sort of opposition to the current. So once you place any sort of resistance into the circuit, 
it is going to slow the flow of electrons and that's measured by the unit of ohms and typically that is represented by an omega symbol so if you have something that has a resistance of 5 ohms it's normally written kind of like this okay and the resistance will be developed by um, a bunch of other factors basically everything has some form of resistance but the things that people typically focus on are just plain resistors themselves that are placed in a circuit to control the flow of electrons or things that just typically use electrical energy like a light bulb when they're placed in there electrons have to use a, a good amount of energy to pass through them therefore they are also considered a resistor and provide some form of resistance i hope that was helpful in helping you understand an electrical circuit the requirements for an electrical circuit and the three main components of the electrical circuit Thank you for watching and listening.